Hey, good morning everybody. This is Matt Reisinger with Reisinger Homes. Welcome to my video blog on green building and building science. I'm here with John Umfress. John, how are you this morning? I'm doing great. Good, good. John is my uh, rep from the Austin Energy Green Building Program. John's out at this house. We just completed this uh, home. This is one that my company built uh, with Heimseth Architects. And we're getting our five-star rating and John yep. is doing our final inspection today. And I thought this was a perfect opportunity to corner him up in the attic while we were doing this inspection. <laughs> And just take a few minutes to talk to you about why a conditioned attic in our hot, humid Austin, Texas climate is really the right way to build. First, let me tell you, um, so you don't think that I'm being cruel to John, I brought my little temperature pen up here. We're showing on my temperature pen that it is 78 degrees up in this attic. And our thermostat downstairs is set to about 76, 77. So John, we're about 2 degrees hotter up here uh, in this attic than we would be uh, if we were one story below us down in the, uh, in the upstairs bedrooms. What are the big benefits of doing a conditioned attic uh, in this climate, John? Well, the biggest thing, we're, we're going through a record uh, hot summer here in Austin, Texas. It's been over 100 degrees for, what are we at, uh, like 68 60, yeah. days, I think. Exactly. When, you know, two days from now, we'd break the record. Uh -huh. uh, if it stays hot, and it probably will. And so, normal in a in a house with a normal or a traditional ventilated attic, mm -hmm. even what is it, about ten in the morning, it would it would already be ninety a hundred degrees in this attic, Easy. and it would it would heat up to probably one hundred and thirty, one hundred and forty, as hot as it's been lately. Exactly. So the, so the great thing about doing a, a a conditioned attic or an encapsulated attic, whatever you want to call it, is it really moderates the temperatures in this attic. And, exactly. and protects the, the condition occupied spaces below from from larger temperature swings. Yeah. So, you know, so what you do, you, you essentially apply open cell spray foam. That's what we use in, in, in the south to do these types of attics. And you can see all the duct work and mechanical equipment is up here in the attic. Mm -hmm. And um, in this very kind of moderate uh, environment. Yeah, very so, tempered in here. Yeah. So if we would have built this traditionally according to John's calculations, we might be 60 degrees hotter up here than we are currently. And can you imagine these, what are these ducts, R6 or R8 maybe, something like that? Yeah. So uh, we've got maybe 50 some degree cold air with a little bit of insulation, you know, R6 or R8 running through an attic that could be nor almost 100 degrees hotter from the inside of the duct to the outside. That's a huge temperature difference. Yeah, that's the fight you're going to lose. Mm -hmm. And, and of course, anytime, anytime you use energy to try to essentially cool the air, remove heat from the air and distribute it through the house and run it through a hot attic, you're going to be losing efficiency, overall efficiency. So this is really going to make the house perform much, much better Yep. and help to keep temperatures more stable. Because that's what that's what keeps people comfortable. Really, is a is a constant temperature, avoiding big temperature swings, and that's where these these types of uh, attics really shine. Now, there's a couple of things you have to you know remember about these. Exactly. If you have mechanical equipment in these types of attics, like this one does, you need to apply either a, a flame and smoke resistant coating to the surface of the foam, or put an ignition barrier, and that's that's code under the International Residential Code. Another thing you need to do, because it's essentially sealed up, you aren't bringing in outside air from anywhere, you need to have either a heat pump, which doesn't need any combustion air, or you need to have a, a sealed combustion furnace like this condensing furnace here. And if you see these... Yeah, John, show what those pipes are for, if you would. Yeah, these PVC pipes actually bring outside air into the furnace, combustion air, and then they also exhaust uh, the uh, flue gases and uh, essentially the moisture out of the pipes condenses in these. Makes it a lot more efficient. Uh, you can use a plastic piping to run directly to the furnace and these things work really, really great. It's like 96% efficient, I believe, this furnace that we put in this house, John. Yeah, compared to most most furnaces, standard uh, atmospherically or gravity vented furnaces, which have a, a, a rating of about 80 AFUE. Yeah. So that's so annual fuel utilization. So a lot more efficient. Yep. 15% um, plus more efficient. Yeah, and most of these two are hooked to a variable speed air handler. Exactly, which this one is. Yeah, and so essentially the, the speed of the air handler varies to meet the uh, your heating and cooling needs. And so most of the time it's going to be a, a much quieter system. It is, for sure. And, and it's going to use a lot less energy because the furnace fan or blower is not running, you know, 
full blast full speed. when it's running. Exactly. It varies up and down, so it's really nice. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. Tell us about this big box behind you here, man. Man, this is pretty exciting, John. <laughs> I love this. This is an Ultra Air uh, 150. This is this. The main purpose of this white box is nothing but dehumidification. Um, these very, very efficient houses that we're building, that my company's building, uh, along with your help, of yep. course. Uh, this house is at over 900 square feet per cooling ton, um, which is very good for this climate. And so uh, there's a lot of uh, times during the season, not necessarily right in the middle of July, but sure. a lot of times at the beginning or the end of the season where the temperature may be satisfied in the house, so the AC is not running, uh, the dry bulb temperature, but it still may be humid in the house because it's still humid outside. Right. And so the sole job of this unit is to bring uh, the dew point, or pardon me, bring the uh, humidity down in the house. So we actually have a separate T-stat, or dehumidistat rather, for this unit set at 50% RH, and all this unit does is try to satisfy that RH percentage. So it's a help to the air conditioner in these uh, in these high cooling times, and during the beginning and the end of the season, it really makes a big difference in comfort. And that's pretty important because most air conditioners, or cooling systems, need to run 15 to 20 minutes before they really start dehumidifying the air and taking the moisture out of the air. Mm -hmm. And you got to remember, moisture is heat. Yep. And so if you can remove remove the moisture in the in the house, dump it outside, you're removing heat. Exactly. And now you, you said something and then you corrected yourself and I wish you hadn't have. You mentioned dew point. Right. And so that's a you know, I wish more builders and and, and uh, HVAC technicians would design systems to maintain a certain dew point because mm -hmm. you know the key to key to occupant comfort is not really relative humidity or dry bulb temperature that the thermostat reads. It's actually dew point of the air inside, which yep. is the relationship between those two. Exactly. And to maintain good comfort, you need to maintain a dew point between about 52 and 56 degrees. Mm -hmm. If you can hit that, and you can calculate that with your relative humidity and your, your dry bulb temperature, mm -hmm. if you can keep it in that zone, you're way ahead of the game. Yep. And one of these will help you do that without having to run this bigger kind of a little more energy hungry system over here. So that's a good move. Yeah, and this system is very efficient too, John. Uh, when this thing's running, it's using like 6.9 amps or something like that. So it's it's a very efficient uh, way to remove. So that'd be about 700 watts. About 700 watts. That's this right. one, when it's running, is it would be using probably about 2,000 watts yeah. you know, or, or more. Or more. Yeah, or so more. so that's a that's a that's a great solution to to a problem. Really, really can maximize the comfort in the house. Yeah. Pardon the noise, by the way. That's our solar guys upstairs. We don't have massive squirrels here in Westlake. That's uh, some guys putting some solar panels on. <laughs> solar panels? <laughs> so how much are you putting up there? We're doing uh, 5.6 kW on this house, so we're going to have a really nice sized array. That should really help with the electric bills on this house. 5.6 kW would probably give you about 7,700 kilowatt hours a year. Mm -hmm. Uh, with the D-rate factor and the, the solar exposure we get here. And so that, that will go a long ways to offsetting the energy budget of this house. So, yeah. so this house will probably use about one-third as much. And when I say use that much, that, that's demand on Austin Ener Energy's grid. Yep. So it'll have about one-third the demand on the grid that a, that a normal house this size would have. Yeah, that's, that's quite a feat, too, and that makes a difference for you and Austin Energy, but that makes a difference for my clients too in, in a lot of ways. Energy bills are important and energy prices are not going down. And the other big one for me as a builder is comfort. You know, these, right. these clients hired me because they wanted uh, a well-built, comfortable house. And um, and not every house that's built is, is very comfortable all the time. So to make a house that's uh, that meets all those requirements really is, is a win for my company. And that's the goal of Austin, Austin Energy Green Building. We've been doing it for 20 years. And, you know, just like the builders here locally, we always learn better ways of doing things and yep. pass that along to the building community. And not just, not just, you know, custom builders like Matt, but all builders, whether they be production, affordable homes, you know, multifamily, single family, whatever. And, and you know, a house like this is a result of that work. The other thing I want to point out to you, uh, John, this is, I would consider this house not necessarily a bleeding edge house, um, but but this is a, a well-built, very efficient house. And I really pride myself in building homes that are reliable and uh, and don't require some special maintenance plan or some, uh, you know, crazy service guy that needs to fly over from Germany to, uh, <laughs> to repair things. You know, these are kind of off-the-shelf technologies. 
built with really good subcontractors that are good at what they do. I mean, even just looking at, at the ductwork behind you, John, this is all uh, rigid metal ductwork uh, through main, the main trunk lines. The guys just did a really nice job of, of uh, installing things. We're using uh, a manual J when we, uh, when we install, so we really know how many CFMs we need, what size equipment we need, things like that. Yep. So we're not doing anything that's, that's bleeding edge here or using some crazy technologies. We're using American standard off-the-shelf equipment but using very high efficiency equipment and putting things together in a very thoughtful way. And of course, that, that arch, the architect on this job helped with, uh, with that process a lot. Um, so we appreciate your partnership, John. We've learned a lot from you guys, and you guys make a huge difference in our building community here in Austin. Well, we couldn't do it out without the builders. And, and you know, the objective of the Green Building Program is, is one, to have every house be, you know, a green built house, but also to basically have you drive down the street and not be able to tell a greenhouse yeah. by looking at it, yeah. because really it's it's not what it looks like, it's how it performs, and that's yeah. the key. And that's why I love to talk about high efficiency, uh, high performance construction, more than just green, because yes, we are doing some green things in here, but we're also doing some things that are really high performance. So. Yeah. Thanks again, John. Have a good day, everybody. We'll see you next Thanks. time.